Today on Family Talk, babe, sweetheart, what are you doing? We're, uh, we're about to start the show. Checking out the latest news. No, but we're about to start the show. I'm, I'm about to give my... Today on Family Talk, we'll be talking about... Are, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm... Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is social media invading your family life? On today's edition of Family Talk, we'll talk about how to stay socially connected and get to keep your wife too. Join us. Welcome to Family Talk. I'm Willie Oliver. And I'm Elaine Oliver. This is a program about strengthening families and inspiring hope. It's a place where we talk about real family life and share tools that will strengthen our marriages and families. As I like to say, when we have stronger marriages, we're more likely to have stronger families, stronger churches, and stronger communities. Well, talking about strong communities, you know, there's a lot of hype in the media these days about who's using social media. This is true. Here are some statistics on social media. 79% of U.S. adults use social media. There are 901 million people worldwide on Facebook. If Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest country in the world. Amazing. How many friends do you have? Oh, a few thousand. A few thousand, like 1,000, 2,000. Uh, right now it's about 4,000. About 4,000. So you have about 4,000 friends. How do you keep up with that many friends? I don't. I don't try to. You know, they say things. I say things back or I just put stuff out there, you know, that I think people need to know. And uh, it's up to them to get it or not get it. This whole social media thing is an interesting phenomenon. In fact, 200 million people worldwide are on Twitter, and they communicate in 140 characters or less. We call them sound bites. Amazing. There are also 3 billion people worldwide who use YouTube. 87% of the world's population now have mobile phones. Mm -hmm. Some have more than one. Right now, there are 7 billion people in the world and 5.9 billion mobile phones. Very shortly, there will be more mobile phones than people. That's amazing. Can you imagine? Well, it's amazing, it's crazy, it's all of the above. Do you remember when the mobile phone first came out? I remember. I had a big thing. You it know. was huge. Yes, it was big. And now they're like this small. Yes, and getting smaller, and uh, they're not only a phone. Before phones, mobile phones used to be about talking on the phone to someone who was not just next to you. Now, with smartphones, we have everything. We're connected to the Internet. We have our entire lives. I mean, if, if you lose your, your mobile phone or if it quits working... It's almost like you, 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 can't, you can't function. function. <laughs> <laughs> you can't function, yes. Yeah, so it's, the whole notion of social media is creating quite an interesting impact on families. Especially on families because, you know, families and relationships are all about communicating. But what's happening is that we are, well... Mm, communicating more and uh, really understanding Are less. Are we really communicating? Well, we, we're making more uh, connections, but we're not really communicating at a level that's important to sustain uh, healthy relationships. Well, indeed. So today on Family Talk, we're going to talk about how the social media connections are impacting our lives and our families. Stay with us. Family Talk will be right back. Social media is interrupting everything! 
amazing. Sounds familiar? Looks familiar. Have you experienced this in your family? Well, today on Family Talk, we're going to be talking about social media and the family. What do you think, Elaine? Well, I think the video is, well, it's very funny, yes. but it's very true to life. Indeed. You know, um, I think that... Lots of families are having this challenge today. Absolutely. Where people are not really engaging in with each other, but rather they're millions of miles away. So, you know, they're sitting down to family dinner. Yes. And we know from research that family dinner is very important for so many reasons in families. Right, right. But if you're sitting down to family dinner and everyone is Doing their disconnected, own thing. Yes. then it's, uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of benefit, even though Lots it was a very use. healthy family. Yes. You well, know, they, you they know, were eating they were salad. Only eating salad. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe that was their first course. Yeah, so no. they have you know, very sophisticated meal time. Yes. But um, yeah, it, it, it really struck me because everyone now has access. So remember, I remember when I was a kid growing up, we had one TV yes. in the house. Well, I had no TV in the at, house when oh, I was growing well, up. Well, you trump that, okay. <laughs> but the TV got locked up in, in someone's room and um, you couldn't get in there unless you had permission, yes. you know? So we didn't have ready access to yeah. watching the TV. Yeah. Well, now our kids have cell phones. Well, they grew and, up with computers. And they have computers. Yes. And now some of them have iPads. I've yes. seen 11-year-olds with iPads, cell phones, computers. So and just this last weekend, we were at a function and went to a friend's house for dinner, and there were two toddlers with iPads. I mean, young children. They must have been about five or six years old. And they were, each of them with an I iPhone, playing games. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's interesting that young kids know how to use how to and use the technology. Yes. You know, so um, it, it's it's definitely invading our family lives. So the question I would ask is, is this technology advancing our lifestyles, or is it setting us back? Well, I is think it enhancing uh, how we have access to stuff in society? And do we really need all that access, or is it interfering with the healthy relationships that need to be developing in families? Yeah, well, it's a little bit of both, right? So it's a wonderful tool, and, and I always say this, uh, the, the Internet is just the most amazing tool. It is amazing. Right, because, I mean, you can pretty much Google anything, yes. anything that you want to find. Now, I personally prefer to get a book and open it. Do you really? I, I'm trying to rely more on the Internet. Um, but for me, I still love pulling down my cookbook and, and looking for recipes. I like or, just speaking to Siri. You know. Yeah, I know, and I know. You have the iPhone 4S, you know, you hit your button there and you speak to Siri. But, you know, I, I don't think Siri is at, as advanced as they're saying uh, Siri is. Right, and I still love going to the library and getting books. But I have to say that you're laughing at me. <laughs> Because you're I trying do. to get your point about the book. I, I do. I love, you know, going, you know, touching the book, feeling it, smelling, smelling it, it, all of that. Okay. But let's admit it, it's much easier to carry. You know, I have lots of books on my iPad, and it's so much easier to carry several books. I it's, couldn't imagine uh, traveling around the world with, that, with, with a bag full of books. You remember when I used to do that? I remember when you used yeah. to try to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And, so, and then I had to help you with your uh, suitcase uh, up on the... Um, you know, I know, to lift you, it yes, to, to lift the it overhead, up. right, yes. right. Now it, you don't have to do that anymore. And so my muscles are not as strained anymore. Yeah, well, anyway, that's another story. But, um, but so it's a great tool. You know, we have easy access. Um, we have information at our fingertips. You, you ask the question, does anyone really need all that information? Absolutely not. We I don't think the answer is no. All that information. But we have it. And, but we have the information. I think that's the challenge, that we have the information. So now that we have easy access to that information, how do we police ourselves? How do we monitor ourselves so that we have uh, healthy um, dynamics that we're dealing with as, as people in families and in relationships? Because what we, I keep hearing is that uh, marriages are uh, ending and parent-child relationships are really challenged because no one is listening to anyone anymore. Everyone is tuned out and tuned into their own whatever it is they're tuned into. Yeah, it yes. sort of trumps headphones, right? Yeah. Remember when you headphones. couldn't get your kids to, you know, get off their, their what, what were those things called? 
They're, the Walkmans. The Walkmans. The Walkmans. Walkmans. Yes. Yeah, so that's... Do you remember the Walkman? I remember the Walkman. That's Walkmans. like uh, two billion years ago. Exactly. You know, I exactly. mean, and everything is fast and moving fast, just like the Bible of says. We, Knowledge will be increased. Yeah, of course, we know it wasn't two billion years ago. Well, yeah, I wasn't around here. As a hyperbole. Um, You're saying that I'm exaggerating? Just a tad. Just a tad. Just a little bit. Okay. But, um, so we're talking about in, invading families. Yes. Marriages are being destroyed. Talk a little bit more about what's happening to marriages because of social media. And when we're talking about social media, we're talking about the smartphone, the, the, um, what's on the smartphone, the iPad, the iPhone, the Android, whatever it, it is that people have. Well, what's, what's the issue there is you, that you, it, have, you have access to the Internet. Right. You have yes. email. Yes. You have music, um, books. Music, you have books. You magazines, have Facebook, Twitter, yes. YouTube. Yes. So you have everything on one little tablet or yes. one little phone. Yes. So the first thing that we saw was how it was invading this family and the fact that they were not having conversations. They were not having with, conversations, at least not with each other. Not with they each other. They seemed to be amused by stuff that was happening outside of the family rather than connecting with each other. So. How do you grow together if, in fact, you're not spending any time together? And spending time together is much more than just being in the same physical space. But engaging each other and sharing values and having conversation, that really counts so that we know where we are as a family. That's correct. So families now have to renegotiate, yes. right? Because there aren't any books yet, or perhaps there are studies and papers. They're but, coming out. They're but, emerging rapidly. Correct, yes. correct. But right now, if we go off of the old rules, we can say, because we had a rule in our family, no TV during um, dinner time in no our TV. nuclear family. Yes. So we would turn the TV off before we sat down to dinner. Uh, at least we tried to turn well, it off. Right. Yes. I would turn the TV off. That's right. what I remember. Right. Yeah. So, um, or we would say, you know, you couldn't listen to your headphones while you were... Um, while you were at dinner, or even sometimes, I mean, I was pretty hard and fast about driving to school and not having kids have their headphones on. I know some parents might think that was a little excessive, but I felt that I only had those 20, 30 minutes in the car in the morning to talk to my kids, and I didn't want them listening to headphones. Listening to somebody else instead of listening to what Correct. It was the my messages that you had to, to share with to them. To pass on my values yes. to them or, or find out what was happening yes. in, in their, their day lives. or what yes. they were concerned about yes. for the day. So we have to sort of renegotiate and reframe, set new boundaries for how we're going to do family if our families are going to grow. Yes. We're talking about social media and the family. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Family Talk, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we can not allow social media to invade our family life. Welcome back to Family Talk. We've been talking about social media and the family. Man, it's an amazing uh, reality for us these days. And we were talking just before we went to break about what? Yeah, well, we're talking about how it's interrupting our families yes. and the fact that it's always with us now. So it's not like years ago, even a decade or two decades ago, where a TV, there might have been one TV in the room, yes. and it was locked away. Um, now you locked carry... Away. I thought it was in most people's living rooms. Well, not in my home. <laughs> it was locked up in my grandmother's bedroom. Okay. You know, and, and when I say locked, the door wasn't locked, but we, we had an understanding that we were not allowed to turn on the TV unless we had permission. And, um, and so it became like a, a family time. If we watched something on TV, it was a family time. Now, you know, there are TVs in, Everywhere. in every room. But, yeah. but uh, you know, kids today say, well, we don't even need TV. They have Netflix or they have their YouTube or, you know, so, so whereas before there might have been, you know, just three channels or five channels, now, you know, you've got all these channels. hundred channels. People have dishes. Premium channels. Premium channels. Sports channels, movie channels. Right, but aside from that, you have it right in your fingertips. You've got it on your phone. You have it on your, your iPad. iPad. You have, you it, have on it on your, on your computer. computer. And yeah. so it's really invading our families. And so um, there, it, there's good about it. We said that there is some good. Yeah. You know, it's not all bad. Well, but one, one of the good things I like about, uh, well, technology uh, computers, uh, iPads, iPhones, is that I can get my email any place. And uh, 
I'm working. I'm not only working in my in my in my office, but right, the converse but, but is problematic. That, right, because yeah. now there's no separation of work and home. Correct. So you know, you're always working. Work has invaded home. And, and you and wake up and you look at your iPhone and you look at your email. Are you speaking from personal experience? Uh, some of it is personal yeah. experience. Yeah. That it's um, you know it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's all with you all the time. You know, it's uh, like the Holy Spirit. You know, you. you it, there's easy access. You wake up, you turn on, you see numbers. You well, hopefully, hopefully people are, are invoking the Holy Spirit into their lives yes. first thing in the morning yes. and, and not their email or not their Facebook or whatever. And yet we know from what we hear from many families that it is keeping us away from our devotional lives. Yes. You know, even the fact that we might have our Bible our on. on our iPad. Yeah. You know, I, I can have to honestly say that, you know, when I'm at church, you know, I now carry my iPad with my Bible on it because I love the fact that I have references, you know, I can look up different versions, so I don't have to carry five Bibles to... Not, not only that, th you have your Bible, you have your Sabbath school lesson, you have your hymnal, Everything you have your spirit right of prophecy books. But the problem is, is that now when I go to my Bible, I might have a message, uh, an email message, or, and it gets your or attention. someone's sending a message from Facebook or yeah. something. And so I have to really challenge myself to tell myself, wait a second, I'm looking up a text in the Bible, not going to my Facebook. Yes. You know, so how do we, how do we monitor that as families? How do we keep our, our boundaries? And I keep using that word, but it really is important that we now begin to set boundaries regarding social media. Otherwise, it will destroy our families, as we saw in the video earlier on. Personally, I think that uh, it's like anything else, that if, if you don't set boundaries around what, what you're going to do, if you don't tell yourself, well, this is what I'm going to do and no more, uh, I'm not going to be, uh, go beyond this point, then you're going to be in trouble because social media is addictive, you know, and as human beings, you know, we like to check out what's happening and we want to be in the know and uh, what your uh, 3,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 well, friends have to say. Well, talking about the 10,000 yes. friends, well, you know, like you were saying earlier, you have 4,000 friends. And of course, you know. And, and by the time this airs, I'll have 8,000 friends. This, is, this yeah. is correct. And so what has happened now is that we, we, people are developing very superficial relationships. Yes. You know, whereas in the past, we would, um, there were certain things that we would only say to our close friends. Yes. Right? You might call your mom, your sister, your best girlfriend, maybe two girlfriends, maybe just your husband. Um, now, for whatever reason, it's like people have lost their inhibitions. And now well, they're our, none. our private yes. lives have become very public. Yes. So it's almost like everyone is getting their, their 15 minutes of fame. Yes. But there are things that really should be kept private. Not only that. That we're now sharing publicly. Not only that. I think that in terms of complexity of relationships and depth of relationships, that there are certain questions you ask certain people based on a relationship that you have with them. That's been established yes. already. These days, uh, people you don't know will refer to you like if you are their best buddy or they will ask questions that ordinarily they would never ask of you if you were having a conversation. So that invisible wall that used to be up no longer exists. Yes, there's more than that. That what appears to be sometimes innocent uh, is not always so innocent. Right. You and know. so earlier, we want to touch on that because earlier you mentioned that marriages are falling apart. Yes. Is that what you were talking about? Yes. And I'm talking about marriages falling apart because it's so easy to be inappropriate. For example, uh, you could be speaking someplace, and it's happened to me. Uh, we're public people. We speak uh, for the church all over the world. And then after you speak, someone in the audience sends you a Facebook message and starts asking you questions about something you said. And you, you may give a response. Of course, to be sure, you can't respond to 100 people or 200 people asking right. individual questions. And so that in itself can take up, take up much more of the time than you have to give to anyone. So you have four, I have 4,000 friends right so now. So very innocent. Yes, yes, So it yes. may not even be anything perverse. Yes. It may not even be intentionally trying to do anything, but now you're spending all this time because there's that access. But more than that. that. People have. Here, here's, here's where I was going with that. Mm -hmm. So you answer a question about something you spoke about, and then they ask another question. And then the question starts turning just a little bit, and it's becoming now a personal question. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no longer just an objective 
question that the, the person who's writing is asking for themselves. Now they want to pry into your own personal life and, and ask, well, uh, how do you know about this and how has it been for you? And you know, it's a kind well, of boundaries. It's a kind of, it's a kind of stuff that you don't ask of someone unless you have a good relationship with them and you know them for some time. What it does, it, it just cuts across and gets rid of the layers of relationship that need to be established before certain conversations can be held. Right, so there are certain levels of intimacy that need yes, to be established. Yes. So you don't go from zero, you don't go from zero to, to five. five. You know, in an instant. Right. You know, right. You, you need to work up to that. And Absolutely. Yes. So people need to protect themselves. So one of the things that I love, there's a wonderful text in the Bible. It's found in Philippians 4.13 that can really help us okay. in setting these boundaries. And it says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Yes. And I love that text because I think it really helps to set a foundation for us in how we can handle these new relationships that we formed virtually. through social, yeah. virtually, they're through not, social media. They're not real relationships. They're not real. To be sure, you're connected with people you knew from the past sometimes and people you've met recently. But these days, you get people from all over the world who are connected to someone you're connected to, who knows someone, who knows someone, who knows someone, who knows you. Right. So we yes. need to be very careful with our family time, yes. protecting our family time, protecting our relationships, protecting our marriage. Today, we're talking about social media. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When we come back, we'll give you today's takeaway. Welcome back to Family Talk. We've been talking about social media and the family. It is a real complex issue and one we need to have a handle on. We certainly do. And so we've spoken about several things. We've spoken about the impact on our, our families' lives, also specifically marriage. Yes. Um, I think we should say a little bit more about the whole issue of marriage because we, we have personally worked with, with some families who've shared how Facebook have... Um, has become has, intrusive. Has really become intrusive in their, their marital relationship. their marital relationship. And then they are reaching out to uh, old relationships and people they haven't heard from for a long time ago. And, and it's it, so easy to do that. It's you easy know? to get sucked in. Right. Because, right. you know, when you're having especially challenges with your marriage, and we all do have challenges in our marriages, uh, it's easy to be idealistic when someone from 20 years ago, what could have been, or 10 years you know, ago, oh, he or was, five years ago, he was such out. a great guy, yes. she was such a great girl, yes. and then you start fantasizing yes. about something that is not real. So someone might say, well, it's not pornography, but it is destructive to your relationship nonetheless because you're engaging in a relationship that first of all is is very superficial it is superficial um, secondly it's taking you away from working on your own relationship yes and 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 thirdly it's it's very disloyal because if you're sharing something about your spouse or even flirting yes. with someone else that is not your spouse because you you're not happy with what's happening in your relationship then your own relationship can't be it, it could not possibly be growing well and, and it becomes like an emotional uh, connection with someone else it's a it, it's an emotional affair and it many is. emotional affairs are taking place and they go from emotional to more than that. That's correct. And especially I'm interested in, in children and how we help our own children at home cope with um, the intrusiveness of social media and how we establish rules that we can adhere to in our families so that our meals, our time together, our dinner time has value. Yeah, well, one of the things that, that we recommend to people and perhaps that we even do in our own homes is to put the, um, put the phones away when when we're about to have dinner you know put them in a basket 
and, and just have dinner. Put your iPad, whatever it is that's electronic, we need to just put it aside. Just agree on what you're going to do. Just agree on what you're going to do. So from this day forward, we hope and pray that even as families recognize the value of social media, that we not allow it to dominate our lives and intrude in our families' lives. That's all for today's Family Talk. Join us again when we'll talk more about strengthening families and inspiring them.